Glamour magic, glamour magic. Welcome back to my podcast, y'all. I'm your host, Trishelle. Happy Jupiter Day. How are y'all doing today? Hit me up on Twitter, on IG. I am at Glamour Magic Beauty. On Twitter, I am at Glamagic Beauty. Link in the description. The website is back live. Go check it out. Plenty of content on there. I'm on YouTube, Pinterest, you know, on TikTok. Almost a platform you can't name that I am not on. So, I'm here today to talk about the black community, black love, and just what's going on lately. I am disgusted at some of the things that I'm seeing. I'm disgusted at some of the things I'm hearing, some of the conversations that are being had. And I'm just here to, you know, put my two cents in and kind of just give you my analysis on things from my perspective, right? So, of course, in the media, when it comes to black love and black relationships, I mean, there's a lot going on. There's, of course, the big thing is uh, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan. Um, What else is going on? Lil Baby, supposedly, is with some new girl, uh, which is irrelevant. But he's irrelevant, so is she. And then what else is happening I mean, there's a couple things. Oh, yeah, Diddy and Diddy and Carisha. I guess I'll touch on them. Everybody else, if you haven't got mentioned, be happy, right? I don't really care. I don't really care about these relationships with these rappers and these social media influencers because they don't be real relationships. And they just be so popcorn and bubblegum. It's just like child blah. And when it comes to um, Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey, let me get on that because while I'm talking about fake relationships, their relationship was very fake and very staged and, you know, whatever, whatever. But um, it is what it is. It happens all the time in Hollywood. Um, and it's, it's just a part of the industry. My problem is that y'all believe it enough to be super emotionally and mentally invested and in doing think pieces and coming up with stuff. I am disgusted with y'all. When I've gotten on YouTube and Twitter, the amount of people that are making up reasons why Michael B. Jordan and Lori Harvey broke up is ridiculous. I'm tired of hearing he wanted to marry her, but she didn't want to get married. I'm tired of hearing she was too young to get married. I'm too. T- I'm tired of hearing, oh, he didn't like to buy expensive gifts and she liked the nigga that trick on her. I'm sick of hearing that. I'm sick of it all. Like, I'm exhausted. Um, with y'all making up shit, y'all coming up with other shit, you know, she didn't this and that's not, here's what's going on from my perspective, because it's kind of obvious and I wish y'all had brain cells to rub together and make work for people who really like are invested and believe it and who are doing think pieces and of course, you know, all this other stuff. Y'all got to wake up to the magic that's being done in y'all face. This is what I've been, this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm tired of y'all just being sleepwalkers. Let's talk about this, right? Yes, it was clearly a contract. We really only saw them two together when it was beneficial. And every time they took pics, most of their pics were like taken of them, not them with the phone taking the pics or them with the camera taking the pics. It's clearly a photographer there. So... If you just just take yourself out of the box. See, that's the thing. Y'all be so caught up in the matrix. You can't even tell the shit was completely staged. You know, makeup, outfits, pop, you know, pap strolls, pat pics, media headlines, you know, publicists making statements. Like, it's very obvious that the whole thing was contract. What did it last? Over a year, you know, right when that contract was up, probably had like a... Anywhere between maybe 12 to 18 month PR contract, dead ass. Hollywood really be on that type of time. So that's what it was giving. Another thing is when it came to, or when it comes to Lori and uh, Michael, it was really obvious that it was all staged, planned, and set up the way that they issued statements. They're both completely, first of all, them issuing a statement, they're both completely heartbroken. They broke up. Then 
Like, then why? But they're completely heartbroken. Get the fuck out of here. That sound like some shit coming straight off the desk of a Hollywood publicist. Y'all kill me how y'all eat anything up. And that's why the people in the media, that's why they do what they do. That's why the publicists be like, bitch, let me type up something real quick before I go to lunch. That's why they be doing that. Because they know that they can push anything to y'all and y'all gonna eat it up. Y'all are gonna just be so happy to just be talked to. Y'all give desperate and hard up a lot of times. It's for real. And I'm really not trying to drag the general population too bad, but it's like I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tug on y'all wig a little bit for being so fucking gullible. To listen to every story that they put out. If they so heartbroken, then why were why they not together no more? Duh. And you know, it was structured to make her look bad. And that's what I'm gonna start talking about with the black love and this whole thing of divesting of feminism and, and black relationships and all that shit y'all like to talk about. <laughs> I don't like the way Michael B. Jordan played that. It was really obvious that Michael needed this for his career. Everybody knows it, he's been seen with a lot of non-black women. I don't care about Michael B. Jordan dating non-black women. I think most people, in, especially the men in Hollywood, like... I'm not into Hollywood niggas. I don't. I don't fantasize about actors and singers and ball players and rappers because, you know, I don't like niggas that like niggas. Period. And most guys in Hollywood, even if they don't initially like uh, men, they do have to do things to get roles and get album placements and get deals and get this and get that. Like it's it's pretty openly known at this point. So if you're a woman that is into that type of man who's into um, entertainment industry in any capacity, especially if he's going to be a celebrity, you should probably ask yourself, like, are you okay with men who like men? Are you, do you like women? Like, are you down with that? And um, are you down with it? Are you okay with it? Because if you have any hesitation, you probably don't want to go down that road. But with a guy like Michael B. Jordan, I don't really give a fuck. But clearly, a lot of women, a lot of black women do. And that's why his team felt the need to put him with the black woman. You know, I I also have heard that this has something to do with uh, Black Panther. You know, them wanting to make sure that Black Panther does well. So he needs to be with the black woman and all this other bullshit. And I feel like... Um, I feel like that's whack. You know, there also has been some gay rumors about him. I don't care. I wouldn't be surprised. Again, he's a, a man in Hollywood. I don't, I don't give a fuck about all that. I wish black women didn't care so much. And this is, and this is what I'm going to say. Now that I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I'm on it. Black women, why do so many of us care so much about who black men date because when when you care that much you set the community up for situations like this a bunch of contractual relationships and then when they don't work out you know you're extra disappointed and I already of course the moment I saw the headline I was like okay so next week he'll be with some non-black girl and because that's probably what he really likes or he just likes men either way who cares and not every not you know not every single black famous man is gay or dl or whatever but we, again we do know what, what goes on in the industry people can really be into that they really might just be doing it for work i don't know i don't care but that's what i mean i don't know why we're so invested i think people being invested into celebrity culture is a bit much it's becoming a bit much and especially in the black community to where people are staging whole relationships because we care and you know it's because it's still an l to black women because it's like you care the l is that you care you shouldn't care about michael b jordan because do you want fake love do you want fake validation and fake support i don't and as far as Lori Harvey is concerned, the whole idea of her being too young to to get married is bullshit. And that's what I mean. You know, when some black women say that they want to divest or that they have divested from black men, I completely understand why. Because you have to understand, it's very strategic for Michael to set it up as if, oh, it's the black woman's fault. That's how I know that this is all Hollywood. And I'm going to take it back to the magic. 
this this is magic being done on y'all because them two were never going to be together seriously you know it, it was never meant for that to happen but it does come off like i tweeted earlier if you've been following the gmb twitter page i think this is a psyop and it's working i've been saying that i think i said Lori harvey and a few other people in hollywood i know i've called out jack harlow I think I mentioned that they do glamour magic and it's really obvious that they do because y'all care so much about them. Like their, their level of fame compared to how much y'all care is uncorrelated. And that's how I know that they're doing glamour magic. As far as in fame spells and all this other shit. But with Lori and Michael, I think that their relationship or their PR relationship, whatever the fuck you want to call it, I think it was set up to do what it's doing, which is cause conversation and kick up, di uh, you know, a d division within the black community. Lori Harvey was not too young to get married. Couples will be like 23 and get married all the time. Couples will have a 13 year, 15 year, 11 year, eight year, whatever, whatever age gap and get married and live happily ever ever, live happily ever after all the time. It happens all the time. A 10-year age gap is not that big of a deal. It's really not, especially because she's 20 fucking five and he's 35. She is not too young and their age gap is not too big. The black people who are really saying that as an excuse, a lot of black women are trying to like say that as a rebuttal. Well, she, of course she didn't want to get married. She was too young. Y'all sound stupid. Y'all sound dumb as fuck. If you think 25 is too young to be married, you sound stupid. 23, maybe. 25, your frontal lobe is developed. You're halfway through your 20s. Settle the fuck down. There are rich white kids getting married at young ages all the time. And some of y'all are mad because you don't want to hear me compare black people to white people. The reason why I'm going to in this instance is because anybody with a half a brain knows and understands that... A uh, marriage and the ownership of property are two of the greatest ways to grow wealth. And a lot of times getting married can help you own a property faster because we all know it's so fucking expensive to own a property, whether it was in 2018 or now that inflation has sat in. Properties are just not cheap. It takes capital. It takes money to make anything big happen whether it's a business whether it's a property whether it's you name it you want to buy a you know a plane I don't give a fuck you want to buy a bunch of jewelry you want to buy a Birkin it's a lot easier to do so if you have more than one person paying for it that applies with anything that's why y'all niggas like to cut up when y'all go to these restaurants and want to split the bill 15 different ways because it's a lot cheaper if everyone pitches in so it's cheaper if you and your spouse can both be having two incomes and both saving up for a fucking home right and then your parents might you know now you have two sets of parents that can you know probably help give y'all some money or give y'all a wedding gift of 20k to help put down on y'all's property so that way y'all have a pretty nice starter home. That's what I'm talking about. And that home, even if y'all get divorced, because y'all love to try to rebut and say, well, white people, they'd be on their second divorce by the time they're 35. Okay, bitch, and they get...